<laughs> I work in a busy London teaching hospital. I've got two small children. Put them in the box, we can make jam. That's a good one. But the allotment is somewhere I can go and just be in the moment and not worry and it's good for my mental health. What is it about digging that you like? It's just relaxing. It's just kind of a time to stop and not really think about anything other than just digging, which is nice. There's not many times when you stop and just think about nothing and find the process of digging just quite repetitive and simple and satisfying to gradually take out weeds and see soil that you can plant in. Yeah, it's just relaxing. Do you think about the results? Like what you're going to get out of it? <laughs> Not so much. I don't have as much time as I would like and I really just prefer, I just enjoy the process of of doing, to be honest. I'm not, uh, you know, it's, it is nice to have things that we can eat and watch the kids enjoy tasting things fresh from the soil rather than from the supermarket, but I don't really have enough time to make it hugely productive, but it is satisfying to go home with little, little bags of crops that I know we've grown. And they do taste better. <laughs> Pom-pom, he's over here, darling. I can't think of anywhere else that my four-year-old can Oops. go down and find um, cinnabar moth caterpillars, which are these beautiful yellow and black striped caterpillars that live just on one particular plant. Um, and we've had a couple of those in Oops. our, in our um, kitchen, on our kitchen table, and he's been able to watch them turn into chrysalises. There he goes. My kids have such an awareness of nature and the environment <laughs> and the outside life that they wouldn't have been able to experience. Yeah. Oh. There he is. As far as we know, um, the allotments were given by the then Duke of Northumberland um, over a hundred years ago um, to returning World War One soldiers. Um, and given to enable them to, to rehabilitate and recover from their experience of war. Um, so at that point, when the Duke, the then Duke of Northumberland owned it, he saw it as a place for the community. He saw it as a place um, that people, people would use and enjoy for their rest and recuperation. I think the old Duke would be very disappointed to see what the estate are doing at present. As you can see, this is all unspoilt land. This is allotments, um, as far as the eye can see. And under the plans of the Duke of Northumberland's estate, the idea would be to build on all of this, the whole site, as far as you can see. And uh, the plan now is to cover it completely with something like 140 dwellings with underground car parks. Uh, this area nearest to us would have three buildings extending towards us, rather like fingers, and they would be four-storey, apartment blocks and then beyond there would be a courtyard area surrounded by more blocks of apartments and then in the distance we would have more small buildings bordering on on the perimeter of the site at the other side. The planning application was rejected by the council planning committee and the estate chose to appeal so there was an appeal hearing last year uh, which lasted eight days. Uh, at the hearing the planning inspector also rejected the appeal. He said that it would result in net loss of local open space, which contravenes the local plan and the London plan. Uh, and he also said that he couldn't see any reason why the estate would want to close the allotments, uh, even though the application had been rejected. So he's uh, closed the allotments? Yes, he's planned to close the allotments. Even though he lost that appeal? Yes. So that may be motivated partly by spite, but it's also, we believe that what's happening is he's trying to put together a more modest proposal in the hope that that may get passed by the planning committee.
a couple of years ago, all the allotments here were beautifully tendered. They were all occupied, all looked, looked after. As you can see now, they've fallen into neglect, uh, overgrown and abandoned because there's no certainty anymore. People don't know how long we're going to be able to stay here. If children are allowed to love nature, they have time to love nature when they're little, when they grow up, they will appreciate and want to protect it. Coming to this wonderful place where they can find butterflies, caterpillars, bugs and all different insects and can, they can see a, a plant growing from a seed and be able to eat from that too. My name is Ariane and I am an allotment holder. I come here every Friday after school um, with a group of children to do um, activities, to enjoy the space, do you like a bite? Yeah, I am. Um, yeah. It's delicious. Today the children are writing a letter to the Duke. Um, they would like to persuade him not to build on this land that we enjoy so much. It is the animal's home and if you build on it, they won't have a home or anything to eat. Look, I got a snail. Look at a snail. It feels like an abuse of, of power. He's a you know an incredibly entitled, powerful landowner who owns a significant um, portion of England. He's incredibly wealthy, beyond my wildest dreams. Wealthy, I think he's what the first, I want to say thirteenth or seventeenth richest aristocrat in the UK, um, and pleading poverty and pleading necessity to destroy something that that is so unique and special i just makes me really sad uh, i i can't quite believe that somebody who has that much power and influence chooses to use it so unwisely so the counter argument which is what about housing and what about people that need somewhere to live and that's what the duke wants to do he wants to build places for for people to live and presumably they're they're going to be rented so they're not going yep. to be you know for maybe lower income families. So how do you feel about denying people like that somewhere to live? Well, I think the first thing to say is that the original plan that he put in had no affordable housing in it. Absolutely zero. So these weren't flats for people who needed flats. These weren't flats for people who didn't have a lot of money. And um, these were luxury apartments like you've seen all along the river between here and Richmond. Um, that were going to be rented as well. So this, this wasn't an investment for somebody to get on the housing ladder and have a home. Um, I agree, people need affordable places to live. I don't think that development was anything like that. I don't think Hounslow Council is not meeting its target for housing. I don't think that can be used as an argument. I think there are plenty of properties in this area. What there aren't is affordable properties. Um, so not So, yeah, not only will there not be allotments, there also actually won't be affordable properties. So what so would then, you say to the Duke if you were to meet him and you had this, you were able to talk to him about the allotments? I don't know if I'd even say anything. I would just walk him around. I, I cannot believe how anybody would fail not to be moved and to, to love that place. Um, I do honestly think it's a really, really unique, special place, and I think you only have to open the gate and walk in to, to know that and feel it. I almost think words wouldn't be necessary. So yeah, I think I would just kind of try and get him to walk in our shoes and understand what a special and important place it is and what will be lost if it's gone. And it's only three acres. He's got hundreds of thousands <laughs> and probably they're not half as beautiful as this one.